I love young adult books where it's a superhero and they're learning how to tap into their power. And that's what learning about our emotions is like, is learning how to use this really powerful superpower that we have within us to be able to propel ourselves forward and be able to direct our attention, direct our energy, direct our focus into the direction of some action or some decisions that will lead us to a better future. Hi, I'm Lisa Jagona, and this is part of the Own It series. And when I launched this series, I said one of the things that you have to take ownership over to own your life is owning your emotions. But why? Emotions are extremely powerful. I think of them as a superpower that we have within us that Unfortunately, I think many of us don't know how to use and tap into appropriately or well to be able to do the things that we need to do to create the life we want to live. And so too often we either sideline emotions, fooling ourselves, thinking that, you know, to feel is somehow to be weak, or we can become handicapped by the emotions, or we do things that are self-sabotaging because of the emotions that we're having, right? And over the next few videos, I want to look at some of these really powerful, strong emotions that have strong pulls, and think about and reflect how you can tap into the power that emotions have to to really tap into a powerful thing embedded within them to create a life that is more fulfilling and um, full of integrity. Emotions are your superpower. You can use them to your benefit and to serve your purpose. I think of emotions as signals. They're sort of the signs on the road that tell you, watch out for the curvy road ahead, or watch out for the slippery road, or watch out the bridge might be icy when cold right? They give us really important information about the environment that we're in. And so emotions are your superpower. They give us insight. We don't see them, but they give us insight. It's something at a very deep level that tells us what's going on in the environment. And we have words for this. So we say, oh, you know, the vibe of a place or the aura of a person. We're talking about something that registers at a deeper level. And we often feel very clearly, but we cannot, or sometimes we dare not, put words into those feelings that we're having, right? And there's some cultural differences there. Like some, some cultures, it's not really, like we don't really talk about emotions or um, in certain um, environments, you know, talking about emotions is so traumatized and stigmatized that no, it's a weakness if you want to talk about how you, you know, disapprove or don't like something because it, it hurts, right? And so there's differences there. But when we understand our emotions and know how to interpret the message that they carry and they bring to us, we are able to make more informed decisions about how we are living. I think emotions are highly connected to our intuition and our gut intelligence. And I want to begin by acknowledging and pointing out something that causes a lot of pain and suffering for people, that too often our emotions are not, and feelings and how we feel is not appreciated. When our emotions are not validated, or seemingly not considered, we can believe ourselves to be deeply misunderstood, unheard, and even disrespected and devalued. We're not talking about opinions here. What I'm talking about are emotions, the feelings. Yes, the feeling comes first, and then that leads to the thought and the belief, right? So the feeling is there first, and then we interpret that and create a story around it, and that becomes a belief or um, a thought. It becomes a thought, then maybe a belief, if we really buy into it, right? It's a thought, then a belief. So first is in feeling, an emotion, then a thought, 
than a belief if we fully buy into it. So often when we say something is unfair, for example, we're talking about how the impact fails to take full consideration of how those who are impacted feel or would feel or will feel, right? When children say something is unfair, they're often referring to a gut instinct. They're, it's a feeling. More, it, it, It's not an intellectual analysis. We do that after the fact, right? We feel it. We feel very clearly something you know, is unfair, we call unfair, but it's only after the intellectualization that, you know, we may proceed to analyze it. But it's a feeling first. Something feels off, something feels wrong, something feels not right. Um, so that's, it's a, it's, it's a very deep intelligence. And here's the thing, <laughs> and I want you to hear me on this, please. Hear me on this. Your feelings and your emotions are real, legitimate, and normal. Owning your emotions means you stop needing approval, permission, validation from anyone else for your emotions. You're, you free yourself emotionally when you stop seeking validation from someone else, especially when that someone else is the cause of that, say, painful emotion. Most of the time, you're never going to get it. You're never going to get it. And so the moment that you realize that you are holding on hope to something that's never going to happen, you have to find another way to free yourself so that you can move forward. So your emotions are yours. They are legitimate. They are real. They are normal. You do not need validation from anybody. You don't need permission from anybody. You don't need approval from anybody. You don't even need an apology from anybody, really. You need to forgive yourself to move through it. Let go of it. That doesn't mean that you don't hold the person accountable. There's a difference. But you have to let go of waiting for somebody else, giving power to somebody so that you can move through it. You're never going to get that. In most cases, you're not going to get it. And you know that. You know that. Some of us have been waiting 50 years for an apology that's never coming. So at what point do you let go of it? Do you let go of the expectation? Do you let go of the story? Do you let go of the story that's associated with it so that you can free yourself emotionally and move forward? Let go of the expectation that somebody's going to approve it, validate it, you know, apologize for it. There's too much spinning our wheels and retelling the same story for something that caused us to feel bad and we're expecting the person who made us feel bad to get us out of feeling bad. Mm -mm. Your emotions are yours. They belong to you. You free yourself emotionally when you stop seeking validation from somebody else. How you feel belongs to you. It is uniquely yours. It is unique to you because of your experiences, because of your history, and the level of resilience that you have. It's important that you know how you feel in any particular occurrence is informed by your experience, your past. And that extends intergenerationally. So what does that mean? Your parents probably passed on something onto you that makes you feel a certain type of way about certain things. And that too is legitimate. That too is real. And that too is normal. Owning your emotions allows you to look at this and decide what is serving you. Yes, mom and dad may have passed it on to you, but is it serving you today? Is it serving the future that you want today? If not, it's time to Find, begin to find ways, take, acknowledge it, and find ways to shift 
so that you release yourself, you free yourself emotionally from it. Now, emotional maturity also comes when you develop awareness, first that self-awareness of what you, what's yours, but also embody that other people's experiences and pasts are different and therefore how they feel about any particular situation will be different. It may be more or less intense depending on their history. It may not even register because nothing in their experience causes them to develop receptors to be able to perceive it, right? There's no associations being made for them because there's nothing in their history that creates that association. And even if they do have some small association, it could be a weak connection, right? It could be a very weak connection, a weak association, which means their emotional response is going to be very low, right? Two people can watch the same movie at the same time. One person could end up in tears. The other person could be looking and wondering what happened. History. There is no, sometimes there's no mental, physical, or emotional memory that triggers a strong emotional response for people in any moment. And when you own your emotions and accept them for all of them, accept all of them, without needing others to validate them, and when you recognize others have their own different emotions that are based on their experiences, you become more compassionate and patient and because and that's because you begin to heal whatever needs healing you can sit with your emotions deconstruct and trace down the connections that you're making with your past that has caused you to have these strong responses or weak responses emotionally you're able to process strong emotions faster which is the key the speed with which you can process your emotions is really liberating. <laughs> that, that, that's something I can attest to. If, if you're taking six months, two years, 50 years, and you, if you can cut that down to you know, a week, a couple days to process emotions, you automatically accelerate how much you're able to do because you're not getting stuck as emotionally stuck. So being able to process faster, you get down to the wisdom that the emotion has to give you to guide you on your way, and you can move forward. But if you are stuck in the emotion, then you're just spinning your wheel, which is why I say you got to let go of the idea that somebody's going to validate or you know apologize for something, and that's what you're waiting for to release because you're getting stuck there. And as long as you're stuck, you can't move forward. So for your own sake, for your own future, you have to find ways to um, release, release that. And this greater emotional awareness allows you to be more compassionate towards others. When you notice someone have a strong emotional response, instead of getting sucked into it yourself, which doesn't help, you become able to grant them what they need and many people need to be able to work, work through it, which is understanding. You simply listen and you can help them break free of the emotional stronghold that can make people stuck. And when you understand yourself, you can communicate more effectively about what it is that you want, what it is that you don't want, as you work towards healing, repairing, and rejecting those things that don't serve you. And so, Understanding and owning your emotional language is such a powerful step to developing your capacity to lead yourself. Too often we get caught up in our emotions. Deciding to own your emotions is deciding to face your emotions. You must face your emotions. This is different than being in the emotion and it's also different than avoiding or suppressing the emotion because the truth of the matter is the pain is real isn't it the hurt is real isn't it 
So there's no amount of avoiding or suppressing that can happen. We have to face our emotion to notice where the pain resides and where its source is. Like what is causing it and where does it reside? And then we can begin to heal there, the pain there. Like if my arm is hurting, if this arm is hurting, why would a doctor operate on this arm, right? So it's just identifying where is the hurt and begin to heal there as opposed to um, kind of just generally say, oh, I hurt. Okay, yeah, you hurt, but where does it hurt? What is the source of the hurt? And once you identify that, you can begin to work that. And then once you locate the pain, you can begin to target it. There are different modalities for that that can help release the tension and the knots and it can al begin to allow the pain to drain out of your system. In the description, I'm going to put a link to an emotion wheel. And I just think it's a great resource of visual representation of all the different emotions. I'm sure there are more um, of the different emotions that exist and the different gradients. Um, I love the I love that you see the different like gradients of the emotions that we have because very often, you know, we what's the difference between rage and anger and frustration? It's a gradient. It's it's sort of similar, but it's a gradient. Um, and I love this representation that allows you to see that. So I encourage you to check that resource out and just look at it and identify some of your favorite emotions, meaning these are emotions that you often find yourself saying that you're feeling or you often find yourself in that state. Um, some people live in an angry body. Some people live in a sad body. Some people live in a very um, energetic body, whether it's joy or just excitement, you know? So what are your, some of your favorite? And then consider how do they show up in your body? So how does it show up in your breathing, in your stomach, in your speech, in your ability to be in contact with other people, touch? Um, and what color or texture or temperature does it have, right? Rage and anger, both in the same sort of space, but different heat, different heat. So remember to subscribe. And if you know anyone that could benefit from owning their emotions, please pass this forward. And as always, thank you always in solidarity. Emotions are so powerful and they really are your superpower.